What's happening, ladies and gentlemen of League Zero, and welcome to the postseason press conference for Capitalism. I've got uh, a few members slash former members of the team with me. I got Casual Derp. We have Drowsy, uh, Gress Hepper. That's always a tongue twister for me for some reason. Uh, Ghost Coach, uh, Slick, and Monty, another coach. So, unfortunately, I don't believe any. Of the management from the beginning of the season is here, so I don't know where Imagine is. Unlucky. I'm pretty sure he's uh, the one who scheduled this, so that's on him. Uh, so I'll skip right past what was the plan for the draft because I don't think any of you could answer that. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yeah. Let's see. I'm gonna try and do this in somewhat chronological order. So, who would you say would be like the biggest in-game leader for you throughout the season? Um. I would have to say either <laughs> yeah, either Grass or Drowsy, because Drowsy had really good, you know, fight planning stuff like that. He's like, okay, we're gonna do this, 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 and then like we, you know, we just kind of did it and it worked. And you know, Grass Hepper main tank and captain, so that's just kind of in-game leader role in itself. Yeah, um, um I did. Uh, the target calling, and then Drazi would do the ult tracking and planning. Uh, yeah, I'd have to agree with uh, Gress being the main leader, but I will also say Shinx did try to lead a lot. So, Shinx, Shinx was good at bringing us back when we were out of focus or we were getting down on ourselves. So he was good at like at least giving us like the kick in the butt to start thinking. In the yeah, one that's week, I would say Gress was definitely the main leader, with Drowsy being secondary. Alright. Uh, were there any mid season pickups of coaches or players that you feel really shaped your season? Um. Uh, <laughs> was it pretty much everyone a mid season pickup? Uh, Almost everyone, like, yeah. 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 There's only a few people that have been here since the beginning. I think that's. You, Grass, and Shanks. Shanks, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's about it. Everyone else is left. Um, I guess probably the most impactful would be Slick. Um, because, oh, yeah, like, definitely. Uh, you know, like, Great Cub leaving. Uh, I rate Great Cub highly. I think everybody in this community uh, rates Great Cub highly, so it was uh, a tough Big position to for Slick. Yeah. yeah, but I think he definitely exceeded my expectations. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Uh, he's like one of the only support partners I've had that I haven't like had to worry about ever. Like he just kind of, that like he keep he keeps up his end of the team and I keep my I keep up my end of the team. We carry each other if we need to, and like I, I never have to worry about Slick not doing what he needs to do or being told to like, yo, we should probably ult here or whatever because he's always on top of it and uh, plays Zen and almost out heals my BAP, which is I don't know if that's embarrassing or just good on him, but yeah, that happens. All right, and actually, uh, something you mentioned kind of leads into another question I've got. Uh, out of all the intermediate teams, you guys had by far the most roster moves throughout this. Oh, I'll get Jinx in here. Ah, uh, hello, Jinx. All right, just in time so. for this question. Uh, so, out of all the intermediate teams, you guys by far had the most roster moves. Uh, why do you think that is, and how did you deal with a constantly shifting lineup? Um, I mean, one of the main reasons was like. Uh, I know Segi just completely bailed. I gotta think the back, or I gotta think back to uh, draft. Um, I think all the the people. I think that throughout the majority of the season, minus a couple exceptions, the main kind of core of the roster stayed. Like for example, like. Gress, you were like main tank the entire time. You, you've always been here. Shinx, you've been, you know, crack DPS. You've always been here. Um, you've been Breakup on was here for a lot of the season. It was unfortunate that he had to leave, but his shoes got filled well. Um, and same, yeah. I, <laughs> I guess it just kind of just, we just kind of learned to adapt to specific circumstances that required you know changes in how we played the game how we played the video game 
Yeah. Yeah, I was like the second to last pickup. Like I was traded with Saito from uh, MM. I guess technically, I was like, my situation is weird, but it, not gonna go into it. Um, like then Kate was picked up like a day or two after, but like we hadn't scrimmed at that point, so it didn't really matter. We essentially came on at the same time, and it was just kind of like, all right, well we got new people. Uh, these people like, like we got new players. Uh, welcome to the team. All right, let's get down to business. It was like. Not seamless, of course, because like we were just a little bit behind everyone else because we had to get used to each other. But I don't think anyone was like losing their minds about it. It was just kind of like, all right, th these are the circumstances circumstances we've been handed. Let's work with it and see what we can make of the season. And I think we did a pretty decent job of it. Yeah. All right. So one trade in particular uh, seemed to sort of come out of nowhere towards the middle of the season, and uh, oh, yeah. you, you can imagine who asked this question, but it also got asked by a decent amount of other people. So, uh, what, what exactly happened during the whole like Kate Rockcraft trade? Like, what what was the so what was going Ooh. on inside the team for that to happen? Because it, it just felt like it came out of nowhere for everyone else. It came out of nowhere for everyone else. All right, so um. Um, rock crafts, uh, I think like, the main three were like rock crafts. I think rock craft, yeah, sorry, rock crafts, uh, goose duck, and shinx, uh, were not working great together. Um, and you know, uh, uh shinx and rock crafts were like two of the main ones. Uh, next thing you know, they just their rock crafts just kind of got like, uh, very tilted during scrims, and then it ended up. And then, uh, and trading him off. Uh, him off. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the the yeah. guy who did this trade is not here, right? Imagine he's not here? No. Yeah, he's not. Um, no. Yeah, it kind of sucks. I mean, he would be the best one to talk about this, considering he did the trade. Um, but I just want to provide a, a tiny bit more insight, because it's pretty easy to just say, wow, well, shit, you know, they just didn't get along. But I did reach out to Rawcross several times. Like we did have many, many talks with Rawcross, and we we tried our hardest to like implement him in, not implement him into the team, but like help help the mental a little bit. But it it just it wasn't working. Like I re I reached out to him. Uh, I know Gress reached out to him. I know Great Cub also reached out to him. We all tried, but like nothing would improve. So I mean, um, I don't know why. Like I can only assume that's the reason he was traded but i don't know like i can't know for sure because it kind of for us it was also out of nowhere like we woke up the day of the game and he wasn't on the team anymore and we were just like oh shit okay yeah yeah um yeah. we were actually yeah. planning on playing yeah. rockcraft yeah. but playing the Warcraft. trade went through the uh, right before the game so that was kind of unlucky yeah i i was actually like i i, I was told i was playing and i was yeah, like I was told I was playing, and the I was first playing. five minutes i was like no, you're you're joking. And then I saw the trade, and I was like, "Wait a minute, hang on." <laughs> so that was definitely a an intimidating experience. But you know, I got to play. That was Pog. Um, nothing against Rockcraft, though. Like, I still think he's a very talented player. Oh yeah, um, no, definitely. It's just that yeah, it was it was kind of an unfortunate situation where um, probably like nothing would have um, helped uh, the situation with the team. So we decided to uh, send him to a place where, you know, maybe he'd be happier. All right. Yep. Moving on to later on in the season, because you guys did make it all the way to the semifinals, despite uh, apparently a lot of intermediate not expecting you to get that far. Uh, specifically, I don't know who asked this question, it was anonymous. But uh, it said from the outside looking in, it seemed like you guys improved greatly between quarters, quarterfinals and semifinals. What was the biggest factor in such a different look from one week to another? Um, um, there was or a lot of our uh, was flawless on the team. Uh, become, yeah, uh, he was our coach. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, think, yeah uh, I think okay. uh, Flawless, Ghost, I think those were the main two. Torion, just a bunch of our coaches uh, started to become active. I uh, guess that was a turn it around. So. Yeah, I think, uh, like, speaking for, for us, like, within the team, 
uh, like for, for us, we, we were pretty confident we were going to beat Obligation and make it to the semis. Um, but it's like, uh, the uh, aside from like the influx of like infrastructure that we got, like a bunch of new people to like come help out uh, and like help keep our mental straight and all that good stuff. Um, I think a big portion of it was the fact that we were going up against DC. Uh, just because like we were very very confident that we could beat mob um, again and I guess mob also thought that because they didn't pick us like I thought they would so, so we got kind of like we got DC out of nowhere and you're we like oh shit this team is actually good like we, we could actually lose to this team so I would say like we, we tried a lot harder in the scrims like we tried really 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 hard um, to like prepare for this game uh, like for us, this was kind of like the finals because once we beat them, we knew we could beat Guangzhou or Mob. Like DC was the only question mark, but we were we were sadly not able to clutch it out. People are gonna be pissed at you because uh, <laughs> yeah. Mob four O DC. At this point, who who doesn't get mad at me? I say anything and people get mad. I, I... Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Gotta have my confidence. I blame the semis yeah. on myself. I had a regress streak, and it really fucked with me. I really was disappointed in myself after the DC. I blame that one on myself. There was, there was a lot of stuff no one could control, though. Like, we we had, like, scrimmed a lot of ball comps, and we were getting used to ball, whatever. And then, like, Casual's PC decided it wanted to die uh, the <laughs> yeah. week out. Like, and Kate is not comfortable on ball at all because it, uh, it doesn't have a laser. So, uh, <laughs> we couldn't, like, run our ball comp, so that's became, I don't like, hog, sig, bar, stuff like that. We made it work when we could, but, like, especially on Busan, we practiced ball, and that was the only map we'd never dropped in, uh, scrims, like, at all. But then we weren't able to run it, just because we didn't have the comfort there. So it ended up going a little awry, but, like, can't control that, it was whatever. Go next. Yeah, uh, I, uh, I'll... A lot of uncontrolled things happened uh, throughout the season, especially for me. Uh, I wasn't around for capitalism when I should have been. Uh, at the start of the season, I was there. I was pretty active, and things went haywire with my schedule, and I, was able, I wasn't able—I was able to be there as much. But I think that if I was there for them more at the end, especially for the playoffs, I think that I could have shaped them into being a grand finals team to win that all. But I'd, I wasn't able to stay around for a while because of my scheduling. But... I regret it. That's fine. So. You did what you good. Yeah. I mean, also, we didn't really expect to win Ilios. And literally, five minutes before the game, Flawless was just like, yeah, just run Hogsig on Ilios if, the, if it gets picked. Yeah. Uh, bro, I remember we were deciding on what to run, and I, br I was like, Hog Sig, let's get, let's get, let's get Gamestar on Tracer. Let's get, let's get, let's get and Gamestar things just worked out. It, it went well, so. Okay. Uh, let's see. So I. Uh, what other questions do we have? If you could redo one thing this season, what would it be? Um, I don't really know, cause I mean, uh, on one hand, I think maybe I feel actually no. The one thing I feel like I kind of regret not doing is like pushing for more, like trying to like get more like votaries and stuff like that, because. Like from Flawless or Moni or even Rock, I don't know, cause or Shinx, or cause I I was also kind of busy with school at the same time, so I didn't have as much time. I made I made I tried to go to as many scrims as I could, but I got benched for the craft. What can you do? <laughs> I I I'd say for a big regret, uh, for me, is especially early on in the season, I I wish I kind of took control of a lot more. Because at the start of the season, it was a very, very, very big split in like decision making between uh, Great Cub, me, and Imagine, and it was like all like us three were just all on different pages of what we wanted to do with the roster. Uh, I I think my biggest regret is not taking over a little bit more because like we had some very, very interesting like decisions early on like, that kind of cucked us, we, especially we the amount of playtime people got in scrims. We, 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 we don't like talk about thirty content. people. We would split Wait, with like content. 30 people. So. We split playtime with like 30 people and it was kind of insane. But. Yeah, I mean. I think my biggest regret was not 
looking out to get back into coaching Huna. Mm. My biggest regret was uh, at the beginning of the season, uh, I thought that I was just going to completely quit the game. Uh, and so I'm like, okay, uh, I'd rather give off uh, everything I've learned while I've played it and just kind of like be done after. Next thing you know, I kind of wanted to start getting back in and like my personal wants with the game kind of got in the way of uh, me trying to coach. So I was like kind of on and off with if I wanted to play or if I wanted to go. Next thing you know, I I ended up just like completely ghosting the team halfway through the season. Yeah. Money, the same thing ended up happening to me. I mean, I was kind of in and out just like you. Uh, I started with capitalism. I wasn't actually expecting to be uh, drafted to expert, and then I ended up being pretty good in expert, and then I ended up joining Crusader Esports, and then I was like starting to scrim high, and things were getting like really, really good, so I could not like show up all the time to capitalism. I thought things would go well. I was in and out of if I wanted to compete anymore, or if I wanted to coach, or if I wanted to do something. Uh, and I ended up uh, like ghosting capitalism. I at least told uh, Imagine and shit like that, but I wish I could have been away more around. Yeah. Yeah, there was a period of like two weeks where we were just like living off of crumbs uh, from Torion. We would True. just leave these tips and then we would uh, try to carry them out. For me, uh, it was like. Not, not, not trying my hardest, but like I, I was playing a lot of stuff I wasn't used to in pugs. It ended up in me not getting drafted. Then it took to like week seven or something for me to get onto a team. Uh, and then when I got here, I was like splitting time between this and managing my other team. And I wish I was able to like dedicate myself earlier. And like I think if we were able to uh, have like more stability earlier on, I think it could have been us in finals. Maybe d walking away with it, like. Yeah, I think, uh, I think just if we had a little more stability, it would have been a lot e uh, easier. Uh, for me, I think I probably, uh, like individually, I think I probably could have put more time into the game. Uh, because during some of the mid-season, I kind of like, uh, I don't want to say I slacked off, but I didn't play as much comp as like I would have liked to. Oh yeah, um, me too. And then like, especially after the Guangzhou game, um, so I got kicked out of my house that game, so in my mom's house, I didn't have like a really like my mouse pad and my mouse didn't fit on the table that I was using um, Which really really frustrated me because I couldn't do 180s for the rest of the season um, Like I wasn't able to turn around completely and that just like boomed my mental for a, a good while where I was like I only showed up to scrims like I, I didn't even want to like play comp because I was getting so frustrated at myself for like all of a sudden like not being able to hit shots or like not being able to do Genji blades because I can't turn my mouse fast enough. It was very frustrating. Uh, but then like once we got into playoffs, I kind of like changed my mentality. But I wonder what would have happened if like I had just kept on going really hard uh, past Guangzhou. All right. Uh, well, I have one last question for you guys. I ask this to every team because sometimes you can get some interesting responses. So, what did you guys do, if anything, for team bonding? Uh, I floor team played League. League of Legends, dude, you guys. Oh, I got did. Dude, instead of practicing comp, like I always told them early on, I see like three of them in the channel playing League of Legends. I want to it was call always... out Grass Heifer specifically for this problem. No, 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 Gamester, Gamester, Gamester. Gamester. Stop Grab playing League of Legends for playoffs. Yeah, we're gonna make a fucking roll just for League. Bro, At I this didn't point, play we League were in an Overwatch team. team. We were a League of Legends team. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in terms of actual team bonding, I think we had a game night like once. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that's when Kalos was on the team, I remember. Yeah, it was more so whenever you guys did play. Whenever you guys I mean, early we tried to play Among Us, but that didn't work out though. Oh yeah, that didn't work out. That didn't work out. But like, we just got on play games whenever we could. Yeah, the most the most we did, honestly, in terms of like team bonding stuff, we played comp together, um, like as often as we could. But like, it was really like some people would play League and some people would like do comp sometimes, but that was like the extent of it, basically. I think. Uh, yeah. Unless we did something else, I can't remember. 
Yeah, no, that was really the extent from what I saw in your guys' team chat. <laughs> I will say though, I think in terms of personal relationships, I've gotten to know like most people on this team, um, and we might not be like staying together as, but um, I know like I want to say a majority of people are playing in Flux Cup, um, so we're still like uh, friends. Or at least, like, uh, on good terms and acquaintances. But, yeah. Someone pick me up, please. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, me, Drowhee, and... Uh, me, the Dra Drowhee, and Gresh all played in a tournament uh, a couple of days ago together. That was really fun. Yes. Fanboy Friday tore it up on the Sigma. Yeah. That's crazy. And, and I actually played well on Farah for once. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, we, we still like I mean, Duke and everything out, here and there. The time, and everything so. here and there. Yeah, like we'll, we'll you here and there, and we talk like in DMs about stuff a lot. So it's not like it's not like we stopped being a team the same the second the season was over. We stayed together here and there as friends. So yeah, I've, even some I of our old like, players. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I feel like uh, because of our roster changes, that might have kept the team together. I was going through like all that, you know, just kind of brought everyone together. I could be completely wrong, but yeah, it's kind of yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, I think also something that actually helped us like uh, grow closer was the fact that like everybody doubted us all the time. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, true. Even even like. Oh, true. Even players like like I would say slick and drowsy who like seem to be like when they perform they perform very 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 well and they're still like well they're on capitalism so they can't be that good like that kind of like helped us that helped motivate us a lot we would just keep going because we we're like yo we just have to prove them wrong I guess we just got to show up in the officials yeah I mean I can't remember who said this but um imagine like I can't I think we can imagine but um going in that obligation game everyone doubted us and. And uh, from what I've been told, we use that as motivation to beat them. Yeah. It's not obligation game. How many, how many upsets was it that we've caused? Um, I think it's been four uh, at this point. Every one of them was an game. upset casual. <laughs> what? Yeah, since since I joined, every even MI6 was yeah, even MI6 upset. was an no, upset. Technically, no one wanted us to win that. Oh yeah, people. Thought the bench would beat us. Wait, did they? And yes. And we, was and they, we got uh, record upset. time. We got league zero record Literally, time. Still, zero to record this day, time. yeah. To this day, we still have the record. But yeah, we were gonna lose to them apparently. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Wait, I, I need to go back and count down. I <laughs> which <laughs> is which is huge because uh, at least we set a mark. Like if capitalism doesn't come back in league zero at any point, at least we set the mark that hey, we have the record. Uh, the fastest match. Uh, the fastest Zero. match. And we beat Mog. Like, bench first like, content doesn't count. They they were 5v6ing. That doesn't count. <laughs> uh -huh. Anyway, guys, that's all the questions I've got for you guys. If you have closing statements, the floor is yours. Uh, yeah, no, I, don't I will see yeah, everybody in advance. <laughs> I'm guys. taking a vacation. Y'all enjoy yourselves. Uh, I, I actually have a closing statement. I, uh, Do you want to go I, first, Drowsy? Yeah, I was just going to say something real quick. Like, I was just going to say, like, I'm probably going to come back next season and try to manage. If not, I'll probably just play Inter again. Because I don't really feel like climbing. Oh, uh, yeah, fair enough. Uh, yeah, fair enough. And I, uh, I, 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 want, I have a quick thing uh, after you. Wanna... After you. <laughs> go ahead, no, after you, after you. You go first. Okay, um, well, all I was gonna say is that I joined Link Zero, uh, like, I think, baby DPS main, the only one I knew was, uh, Ash, because Ash was meta at the time, so that's who I was learning, um, and, like, I learned, I learned a lot from the League, uh, every single player I played against taught me something, uh, I mean, like, in terms of, like, DPS, not actually every single player, but most of the DPS that I ended up matching, like, against, they all, like, uh, I would say each one had, like, their own, Thing. Like, they, they all had, like, one specific thing about them. Um, and, like, it, it taught me a lot about, like, Overwatch and, like, how to play around different play styles, right? Like, I wouldn't say, like, these are two random players, but I wouldn't say Repeat Farah is, like, the same as Sloth Farah. Like, you beat them in different ways. So, I learned a lot uh, just playing against people in the league. Author Repeat blows Mahaha. 
Yeah. Um, my final set, I, I, I'm hoping Imagine's watching this. Uh, but I want to thank Imagine for giving me the opportunity to coach you guys for... Uh, because I was really, really upset at the time that I wasn't able to get manager at the start of the League Zero. So I'm really, really happy that he he basically gave me the reign to help with the roster and uh, help him manage and coach. And it was a really, 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 like, it made me really, really happy that he gave me that opportunity. So thanks for him. I'd also like to shout out Imagine for giving me the chance to have the most fun coaching that I've had in ages. Uh, I have a shout out for Imagine too. Thank you, <laughs> to Imagine, for giving me a tryout because nobody else would. Yeah, I'm gonna shout at Imagine as well. Everyone's um, just shouting at Imagine <laughs> uh, because you know he trusted me uh, to be captain, um, and I think I did okay at least uh, with that. But also, Imagine, please schedule your scrims more than like 30 minutes in advance. <laughs> Back. Yeah, uh, please, please. Uh, I, I like having to find scrims ten minutes after. What do you mean? Ten minutes after. <laughs> uh, it, it provided some uh, the, the uh, suspense for my day. We'd all show up to scrims. Uh, the amount of time we'd all show up to scrims, and we'd be like, "Wait, so where's the scrim?" And we'd be like, "Oh, we don't have anything. Awesome!" Like, <laughs> I I truly hated that. I won't lie. <laughs> Alright, well, that's everything I've got for you guys. Hope you enjoyed the season. Hope everyone at home enjoyed watching the video. Uh, that's all I've got, so see ya.